study. The woman led me through a narrow hallway and into a big bright room with a fire burning behind a grate. Now you sit there, dog, and warm yourself. I'm going to get some blankets for you. The woman pushed my rump down until I was sitting before the fire. I looked around the room at the couch and chairs, at a low table with a bowl of flowers resting in the middle, at the framed pictures on the walls. The colors in the room were soft and the fire was warm and the room felt safe. I heaved a sigh. I heard that, dog, said the woman as she returned with an armload of blankets. You deserve to let out a sigh like that, a great big sigh. I can tell you've seen a lot and done a lot and now you're very tired. The woman arranged the blankets in a sort of nest next to me. Okay, she said, now you rest here. She patted the blankets and I stepped onto them. The woman sat down heavily in an armchair. Oof, she said, my knees don't work the way they used to. I'm not much good at stooping anymore. She paused. Well, dog, she continued, I suppose I ought to introduce myself. My name is Susan, Susan McGrath. I expect you have a name of your own, but I don't know what it is, so I'm going to call you Addie, unless it turns out that you're a boy, in which case I'll have to think of a different name. But I've been watching you for a few for days now, and I have a feeling you're a girl, and Addie seems to suit you. Today, since you're not feeling well, I'm going to put your food in water dishes right here by the fire. And when you're feeling better, you can eat in the kitchen with me. Susan rose slowly and walked out of the room, talking to herself. I'll have to call the vet, I could hear her say. Make an appointment for Addie. Goodness, it must be three years since I last called that office. I wonder if Skip is still there. Susan's voice faded away. I stretched my front legs in front of me and rested my chin on them. I closed my eyes, feeling the warmth from the fire curl over me like a nest of leaves. I didn't open my eyes again until Susan returned, carrying the water bowl and the dish of chicken that had been outside on the stoop. She placed them next to me. Here you go, Addie, she said, breakfast in bed. I took a drink of water and finished the chicken. Susan watched me from her chair, then pulled a footstool to the hearth and, step be and sat beside me. You mind if I pat, pat you, Addie? I don't want to frighten you. Susan held her hand toward my snout. I sniffed her fingers, then I gave him a small lick. Ah, you're a kisser, said Susan. That's fine. She scratched me under my chin, then ran her hand slowly along my back. Good girl, she said. Good girl. I rested by the fire for a long time that day. I was too tired to feel nervous or afraid. Besides, Susan was as kind and gentle as Rachel and Dr. Roth had been. Every now and then she would stir the fire or add another log to it, and when she did this, and when she did, she spoke softly to me. Sorry to disturb you, Addie, but I want to keep the fire going. I want you to stay warm. Susan was a busy person. I kept my eye on her when she wasn't when I wasn't sleeping. She fixed herself lunch as she ate in her chair in the living room, feeding me bites from time to time. I don't usually eat in here, she told me, but today is special. After lunch, she sat at a desk and wrote with a pen and opened up envelopes and sealed other envelopes, then sorted through a stack of paper saying, junk, junk, junk. Oh, this is important. You better keep it. More junk. Keep. Send to Betsy. Junk. And then suddenly she exclaimed, my goodness, I forgot about calling the vet. She reached for the telephone. Hello? She said a moment later, this is Susan McGrath. I haven't called here in a while. She paused, listening. Yes, that's right. Yes. Well, I seem to have found a stray dog, an old stray dog, or she found me. Anyway, I think Dr. Thompson should look at her pretty soon. She probably needs, just needs good food and a home, but I want to make sure she isn't sick. Tomorrow, that would be fine. Okay, we'll see you then. Susan hung up the phone and turned to me. We're gonna ha you're going to have a big day tomorrow, Addie. I have errands to run, and you can come with me. I think we'll go to the pet store. There's a good one, a good new one in town. And then, well, I'm not going to lie to you. When we, have, when we have finished our errands, we'll be off to the vet. You'll like Skip, though. That's Dr. Thompson. My last dog did. Maxie, my old Maxie. Dr. Thompson will give you a cookie, Addie. Susan tidied the papers on her desk and put her pen in a holder. Then she rose, walked through the room and into a hallway and opened the door to a closet. Now, where is that leash? I heard her say. She hauled a bag out of the closet and pawed through it, then put it back. She hauled out another bag and said, ah, here we go. I raised my head and watched Susan remove several items from the bag, a collar that looked like the one I had worn when I was Daisy and lived in the Becker's garage, a leash, a rubber ball, and a cloth toy in the shape of a cat. Susan brought the things back to me, 
laid the ball and the cat and the blankets and said, May I fasten this collar around you, Addie? I wonder if you've ever worn one of these. You'll have to get used to it. I felt Susan's hand clip the collar around my neck. Then she attached the leash to the collar. I imagine you must have to go to the bathroom now, she said. I know you don't want to leave the fire, but we have to get you outside for a few minutes. Just a few minutes. I promise. She tugged at the leash and I got to my feet. I let her lead me outdoors. We walked around her house until I relieved myself near the yew bush by the front door. As soon as I was finished, Susan exclaimed, Oh, good girl, Addie, good girl. And she gave me a biscuit. We are off to a great start. Later that afternoon, as I rested by the fire again, and Susan sat nearby in her armchair, the phone rang. Hello, said Susan. There was a short pause before she went on. Oh, hello, Mrs. Oliver. I glanced at Susan. Her face had changed. It didn't look as soft as it had before this phone rang. Well, I'm just fine. Thank you for asking. Yes, I know it's chilly today. Very chilly. No, I can't think of any, a thing you can get me. I'm going to go into town tomorrow. Safe to drive? Of course it's safe to drive. All the roads have been plowed. I've been driving myself for 66 years now. Since before you were born, there was a very long pause, during which Susan straightened the cushions of the couch, wiped off some crumb wiped some crumbs off of the table, and made a face at the phone. Then suddenly she cried, Sell this place? Absolutely not. I can manage just fine. A moment later, she added, I am not snippy. And then, oh, there's the doorbell. I have to go. Bye. The doorbell had not rung. Susan hung up the phone and walked into the kitchen, grumbling. Who on earth does Mrs. Oliver think she is? Half my age, and she calls me dear? And since when is my business hers? I could hear Susan making banging noises in the kitchen, and I thought of Marcy and George. But when Susan returned to her armchair, she was carrying a cup of tea and smiling a little. She said softly, I'm sorry I lost my temper, Addie. That woman makes me so mad, but it doesn't have anything to do with you. She patted my back. And then we sat together in the quiet house, and I watched the snow start to fall on the other side of the windows. That evening, Susan fixed turkey and peas for supper, and we ate together by the fire again. But then Susan let the fire die out. Not safe to leave it burning during the night, she said to me as the flames flickered and grew smaller, but I want you to be warm, so I'm going to move your bed into the kitchen. You can sleep in front of the radiator, all right? And that's exactly what I did. After Susan put the leash on me and took me outside one more time, she led me into the kitchen and I laid down on my nest of blankets. The snow had stopped falling, but the outside air had been damp and cold, frosty enough to see our breath. I lay gratefully by the radiator. Susan turned off the light in the kitchen, then in the living room, and called to me. Good night, Addie. Sleep well. I'll see you in the morning. I slept warmly all that winter night.